Thanks for staying with us. It's now time for our first hot topic and we're looking at uh, uh, power sector. Customers not enjoying 20 hours will not pay new tariff. That's according to uh, federal government or the Minister of Power, Delabu. We're being joined by an energy expert, uh, Mr. Nick Agule. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, uh, Nyangu, and good morning to our viewers globally. Yeah, uh, you are in Abuja. I, I'm very sure that Abuja, being the seat of power, everybody is on band A. So you must be enjoying uh, the band A um, uh, privileges, right? Well, to be honest, I don't know which band I am on. <laughs> I have not received any communication from uh, AEDC, which is the disco or the distribution company that supplies power to Abuja, to inform me formally of the band that I belong to. So I, I don't know which band I am on, uh, but what I know for sure is that I am not receiving 20 hours of electricity every day. Hmm. But what do you even think about um, sharing Nigerians uh, into into groups, bands, and all that? It's like it's like power stratification. So if you have to be a particular kind of person, or you live in a particular kind of place before you can enjoy all this, what is the need at all for for bands? So we are repeating the same thing that happened in this country perhaps close to 40 years ago mm. then which i believe this was in the 80s 80s or so when the military were in power a minister for communications told nigerians that telephone was not for the poor. Mm. And he made that statement in the light of telephone affordability, as it was then. He meant to say, telephone is not, is not affordable to all Nigerians, so it's not for everybody. And 30, 40 years later, we have another minister in Nigeria, this time for power, saying that electricity is not for the poor so the electricity that he has he's ready to give it for 20 to 24 hours a day to people who can pay it and those of us in nigeria whom he thinks we don't have the capacity to pay for the electricity can remain in darkness this is what is happening and I can, I can assure you that there is a common denominator between that minister for communications 30, 40 years ago and this minister for power. These two ministers are missing one key thing. And that thing is supply. The minister for communications 30, 40 years ago did not realize that the government owned and operated NITA, for which government was sinking humongous money in budgetary allocations, was only supplying 500,000 telephone lines to the entirety of the millions of people in Nigeria. And that is why the phone became so expensive, you know, and the phone could no longer be affordable by the poor, necessitating him to make that statement. And when this same telephone business was not taken away from government bureaucracy of NITA and handed over to true business people, the MTNs, the Airtels, the Tisala, the Gross of this world, the supply of telephone have increased from the miserly 500,000 lines that NITA offered to 212 million lines today. 212 million is a figure that only a few uh, days ago, 
the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, the NBC, say are the active lines in Nigeria. 163 million lines are connecting on data. And the meeting that supply issue was cancelled. The telephone has now become cheap, is now available to the to the poor, affordable, and nobody is coming to say telephone is no, no longer for the poor. The minister for power in Nigeria today is making the same mistake. He is sitting in his office as minister. He has a permanent secretary. He has a retinue of directors. From one paper that we had, we now have 23 Jenkos, 1 TCN, 11 Discos. We have Embed, we have NEC, we have Rural Electrification. We have all this architecture of companies that have emerged through the so-called privatization process. But what are we talking about? We're talking about 3,000 megawatts. 3,000 megawatts is the equivalent of 500,000 lines to Nigerians. It's not enough. And because it's not enough, that is why this minister, in his frustration, has made this same statement to us now that, oh, electricity is not for the poor. If you are poor, you'll be in darkness. If you are rich, I will give you 20 to 24 hours. Come and pay. Because you know why? At 3,000 megawatts for 200 million people, if you give 20 to 24 hours of that to some privileged rich people, there is isn't going to be any more electricity to give to the masses. You can't give what you don't have. If you have three bottles of water and you are giving uh, one one bottle to these people, you are not going to give uh, ten bottles of water out. You won't even give four bottles of water out. Why? Because you have only three. For you to be able to give out more water, you need to get more bottles. So, if you go by global standards of electricity supply, it is that you should supply 1,000 megawatts to every 1 million people. And if we agree that Nigeria is 200 million people plus, then the electricity that needs to be supplied to this economy by these standards is 200,000 megawatts. 200,000. The minister is presiding over 3,000. We're back into the days of 500,000 lines. This minister and this current government decide to do to electricity what we did to telecoms, and that is take government out of the business and bring in global and local operators of telephone, that is people who are, sorry, of electricity, that is people who are in the electricity business. They have the money. They have the technology, they have the expertise, they have the, 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 the experience, they have the pedigree to come in. We will put from these 3,000 megawatts to probably like 30,000 megawatts to start with. And we will continue to grow that towards the 100,000 megawatts, which will probably be the kind of electricity that will become so cheap and will now become available for the poor. So. This is history repeating itself. As we were told, 30, 40 years ago, telephone was not for the poor. A minister is telling us electricity is not for the poor today. But the solution, we have already highlighted it. Yeah, according to the Daily Trust uh, headline on this electricity matter, uh, it got me really, really worried. Federal government to Nigerians accept tariff hike or total blackout. That's what they said. Accept tariff hike or total blackout. That is, you don't have a choice. You must do this, otherwise, total blackout. I don't know why statements are like this are being made, and I don't know whether these statements should always go without some repercussions, some kind of, uh, I don't know how public officers speak, uh, why they speak the way they do, uh, if this is what they call in English impunity, do what you like, nobody can do anything to you. 
accept tariff or no, not even any alternative. Just if, is either you accept it or you go away out of our greed. I don't know. I think the Minister of uh, Power went over the top with that statement. I think the Minister of Power, I, I see a lot of passion in him. I see uh, him, you know, uh, he obviously understands the electricity architecture. But uh, there are statements that, you know, he's making, which I will consider unguarded. And I think he needs to be thinking twice before he utter any statements because we are, we are yet to to come off the one he said that uh, electricity is obviously cheap in Nigeria. That is why people can uh, afford to leave their deep freezers and their lights on and all of that, uh, which again to me was an unguarded statement. He has come out to apologize for that. But he is now making another statement for which he will probably be forced into an apology. So as a minister, it shouldn't be that every time he speaks, uh, he's being forced into an apology. And uh, the first and foremost thing that he needs to understand is that he needs to uh, have empathy. He needs to have empathy. It is not Nigeria's fault that we are generating and supplying 3,000 megawatts to the population as a gas nation. And not only as a gas nation, as a nation with uh, humongous uh, other sources of uh, power, like sunshine, wind, water, and even the land to cultivate for biomass. So it's not Nigeria's fault. And uh, uh, sometimes you hear people who are in charge of the electricity sector make statements such as there is no demand, people are not paying for electricity and all of that. And I always draw their attention to the fact that anywhere in Nigeria, anywhere at all, including in um, Plus TV, uh, where you are now, if there is a generator, a generating set, mm -hmm. either diesel powered or petrol powered, if there is a solar panel, an inverter, a battery, or some way that people are trying to generate their own power, that is demand, effective demand, demand backed up with the ability to pay for electricity that the minister's 3,000 megawatts are not being fulfilled, which is 3,000 megawatts. If people have 24-7 electricity, they're not going to have generators, they're going to have all these expensive uh, inverter solutions and batteries and all of that. Because if you go to other clients, people don't have generators. You know, so the minister has to understand that it is not Nigeria's fault that we are burning away our gas in the Niger Delta. And we know that gas is the biggest source of electricity generation globally, as we speak today, about 70%. And we cannot convert that gas and uh, put it through turbines and supply electricity to Nigerians. It's not Nigeria's fault. You know, so the minister has to know that he is presiding over 3,000 megawatts as a minister. The first thing that he should, he should consider is that that 3,000 megawatts is electricity for a village or some sort of uh, industrial park elsewhere. It's never an electricity for a nation like Nigeria with 200 million people. Because if you look at a nation like Brazil, with a similar population like ours, 200 million plus people, there are 180,000 megawatts. Please, Mr. Minister, can you just think for a minute that your colleague in Brazil is presiding over 180,000 megawatts? And you, Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is presiding over 3,000 megawatts. I think if you consider that, Mr. Minister, it will first and foremost send you back to the drawing board and say, our problem is supply. We don't have enough supply of electricity. Can we now open up the space and allow global and, and indigenous power operators to come in and give the money in to expand this our capacity? As we speak today, the installed capacity for electricity in Nigeria is 14,000 megawatts. 
We are not doing it because there are all sorts of problems. Installed capacity means the infrastructure is there. And once we unlock the problems, the infrastructure will carry the electricity. So I expect the minister of Nigeria to say, it cannot be on 3,000 megawatts. So he should have been addressing the big ticket items that will grow Nigeria's electricity quickly to even the installed capacity of 14,000 megawatts. Why, at, as simultaneously, global power sector players and local investors are busy building additional power plants, additional transmission line, additional distribution network to increase our capacity to about say 30,000 megawatts before the four-year tenure of this government ends. So this minister is micromanaging tariff. Look, I want to tell the minister and all Nigerians listening today to us is that even if this tariff is increased to 1,000 naira, I mean 1,000 because the highest tariff now is 225 naira per kilowatt hour. So I want to say it so that Nigerians will understand the perspective. If, if this tariff is moved from 225 naira per kilowatt hour to 1,000 naira per kilowatt hour, it's not going to provide this minister enough money to do electricity in Nigeria. It's not going to provide him enough money. Because it's just 3,000 megawatts. He's asking, for, he's asking for $10 billion dollars every year for the next 10 years to be able to fix uh, these uh, uh, power problems in Nigeria. He said that's what we need. Uh, but first of all, before we get to that, whether he needs that money or not, maybe uh, this question will help us explain that. Even if the government intends to or decides to hold on to power, hold on to the power sector and not uh, uh, do the needful that you are proposing right now. What do they need to do in the interim to make sure uh, that we can get up to the uh, installed capacity that you're talking about? I would like to ask one question. Is there anything in Nigeria today, and when I mean anything, I mean business. Yeah, because I know the role of governments. In our modern world, the role of government is licensing, regulation, making laws, enforcing laws, and all of that. I won't take that away from government. That is their job. But we also have business, which is in the way business means generate a service or produce a good, sell it, make profit, distribute it to your shareholders, okay? Make that good or service available as cheaply as possible. I would like anybody listening to us today to name one government-owned and run business, and I'm using those words carefully, owned and run. Government owns it, government is running it. One government-owned run, owned and run business in Nigeria today that is delivering anything. What's that one? Is it the NFPC? It's a government-owned business. It's a government-run business. Is it there are four refineries which have been dead for up upward of 20 years? Perhaps the last time NMPC could have ever refined anything out of any of their refineries, any liter at all, could be like four, five, eight years ago. Is it the NMPC? Is it Nigeria Airways? Is it uh, Nigeria Telecommunication Limited, NITEL? Is it the steel plants, all the steel plants in Nigeria? Any one of them? Is it uh, government-run banks? You know, government uh, had banks before. Government had television stations before. Government had radio stations. Government had newspapers. You know, it, it, is it uh, government transport companies? Is it government hotels? I'd like anybody to show me one government-owned and run business which is doing well. Yes, no. So we cannot be doing the same thing and expecting different results. Now, let me put a clarification. Uh, the upstream oil and gas industry in Nigeria, a lot of Nigerians may not even know that it's largely owned by the government, but it's run by the international oil companies. So if you go to Shell, 
Mobu, Chevron, Total, Ajib, all these companies. They are in joint ventures with the Nigerian government. And the Nigerian government owns the majority of the stake. Like in the Chevron joint venture, federal government owns 60%. And Chevron Corporation, U.S., 40%. The same thing in the mobile joint venture. In the shared joint venture, federal government owns 55%. But have we ever heard that Nigeria produce zero barrels of crude oil? As we are producing, refining zero liters of uh, petroleum product today? No. Nigeria produces crude oil every day. The only thing is that the quantity of production is, it varies. You understand? But it has never run to zero. What is the reason? The reason is because the business is not being run by government. You know, government is the majority partner in the, in the joint ventures because it's being run by the international oil companies. That is why those companies are producing crude oil for us every day. They are paying some of the best salaries to Nigerians. The companies are well run. If you go to their premises, it's as if you are not in Nigeria. I can give you another example. The NLNG, Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Company Limited, is owned by government. Is majority government is majority a uh, shareholder in that business, but is being run by the international oil companies. So unlike the NNPC, which is run by government, that cannot even do refineries. As we speak today, the Nigerians are, are, are sleeping on petrol queues. For a petrol nation, I mean, a, a, an oil and, uh, and gas nation, one of the major oil and gas nations, citizens are sleeping on the queue. If we're in the same country, the MD or the group CEO or whatever he calls him, himself, changing his name from NNPC to NNP, NNPC uh, Limited without any change in, in, in behavior, if we're in the same country, he wouldn't come to work today. He would just tender his resignation. Can you be in charge of four refineries and you allow them to die? And then you are now the only one importing the product, and then you now have all sorts of supply issues, sending Nigerians to go and sleep on the queue. Come to your office and sit down and work in all honesty with Harvard. You know, so the NLNG, unlike the NNPC, just because it's being it's owned by government but being run by the private sector, is it started with train one. And today they are on train seven and they are delivering dividends in the billions of dollars to government coffers both are owned by government but what we're talking about here is management so this 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 is it i like anybody to show me any any business in nigeria today that is being run by government that is doing well and it is not they were all talking about uh government holding on to the electricity sector there should be no reason. Okay, so the ten billion is justified, or it's not justified in the, in the, in a, in summary, so that we wrap up. So, the ten billion dollars that is required every year to boost power generation, transmission, and distribution in Nigeria, and I will hasten to add return. Because Nigerian power sector is arranged at three layers. It should be four layers. So that you have generation, transmission, distribution, and retail. At retail, consumers should be allowed to switch their power supplier. So that there's competition. And with competition, consumers pay the, the normal marginal uh, uh, pay prices that will only give the suppliers marginal profit. Mm. And their customer service is up to date. Because if you don't, uh, treat your customers well, then uh, they can switch their supplier to another one. Like in Abuja here, we have no choice. AEDC is the only person. So Nigeria needs to add a, add a fourth layer. The Minister of Power, he travels globally. He sees how it's done elsewhere. He should add a fourth layer to our electricity value chain, retail. So that here in Abuja, if AEDC is messing me up, I can uh, pick my phone and call uh, ABC Electricity Limited and I say, please, I want to be your customer. And they will take my bucket from AEDC. That will make AEDC to sit up. You know? So those are the kind of changes that you can bring in. So back to the point. The point is that $10 billion is not even enough investment to expand our generation 
our transmission, our distribution, and retail network in Nigeria. The only problem we have here is that the, the, the minister is asking for the money. Who will give him the money? The Nigerian government does not have the $10 billion. This is a government that is borrowing to pay salaries. A government that is doing ways and means. They said they were not doing, but a, a data is coming out that they are even still doing under this government. So that money is not going to come. Is he looking for the $10 billion from the private sector? Which private sector will transfer their money into the coffers of government in Nigeria for government to use to do electricity? When you know that we have a government where ministers can transfer money uh, into private accounts, just like that, you know, a governor can just write a check to a private school of uh, $840,000 of government money for a personal transaction. Audit is going to transfer that money into government coffers. The okay. only solution to this, mm. Mr. Minister, sir, is get yourself out of this situation, just like we did in night time. Open up this space. Full right. privatization of uh, generation, transmission, distribution, and retail. Mm. Okay. And let global and regional and you know national power sector investors coming they are, if they come in with their money and they do the thing by themselves they are happy to do it if you had say mtn give your money to nighter to do telephone mtn would not have done it but because mtn was allowed to bring in their money they quickly built the infrastructure as we speak today the telecom companies have invested over a hundred billion dollars in nigeria building the uh, telephone marks base stations you know, uh, 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 cables everywhere. And Nigerians are now talking on 212 million telephone lines, active telephone lines. Yeah. Okay. Do the same thing in the, in the power sector. Okay. Let the CMS, the ABB, the, the, the Manitobas, and all of that come in with their money so that they spend their money, expand the network, give Nigerians electricity, and build Nigerians and get their money back. They will do it. Okay. Why is the minister sitting on that? Okay. And let me tell you, the, the, the electricity we are paying now of 225 Naira is so expensive because the minister is trying to recover only from 3,000 megawatts. All the monies to settle 23 Jenkos, 1 TCN, 11 Discos, uh, Embed, NEC, and all the other agencies that are attached to the electricity sector. If the minister were to recover the, that money, from 30,000 megawatts. It will be cheaper. You understand? It will be cheaper. Because 225 from 3,000 megawatts is nothing. You know, it's nothing. And that is why, just like in NITA, you know, because the, te the, the telephone lines were so few, they were very expensive. I sold my wife's not 9 not NITA phone for 150,000 naira in this Abuja. What is it? Because they were so few. Yeah. And the government was trying to recover uh, money, all the costs from few lines. But when you increase the lines to 212 million, it means that uh, even if it is one one naira per line, 212 million per day, you are making yeah, enough we'll, money. We'll, we'll have to wrap up at this point, Chris. Everybody. We'll have to wrap up at this point. It's, it's, really, it's really disturbing what is happening. Everybody needs power. Whether you're rich or poor, it should be your choice that I will not subscribe. I will not load my meter because I don't have the money. Not that you'll be deprived and put in the dark. We understand all this. I do hope that uh, they are listening and uh, they're going to do what uh, is needful in that sector. Thank you very much, Nika Gule, for coming on the program this morning. Uh, thank you very much. And the uh, Nigerians, look, there is no nation that has liberated itself if the people are docile. Mm. We must keep speaking up. We must be talking to our legislators, talking to uh, our governor, talking to local government chairman, and writing the president. Let's be talking. Otherwise, Nigeria is not going to be better than what it is now. Yeah. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Nick Agule. He was talking to us from Abuja and we were concerned about what is happening in the power sector. The minister has said that those who are not getting up to 20 hours uh, electricity will not pay the new tariff. And we were trying to x-ray the importance at all of uh, 
doing this kind of uh, power appetite as, as it is, you know, uh, choosing some people to get more electricity and others not to get more electricity, uh, electricity in the same country and uh, what needs to be done to make sure that the sector is up and running. We'll take a very short break and when we return, Nigeria has the highest burden of children born with HIV AIDS is our next topic. Stay with us. <music> 